Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. Welcome to our second installment of our Workshop Wednesday series. This evening, we'll be crafting a seasonal charcuterie board to prepare for your holiday or a cozy evening at home. I'm Tara Kitcher, a and representative here in Dallas. We're joining you today from the Dallas showroom in the Dallas Design District. Our guest host with us today that will be preparing the board is Brandy Price with Doug Boster Catering. For those of you in the DFW area, I'm sure you're familiar with Doug Boster and our outstanding team, unlimited menu and undeniable artichoke dip. Uh, Doug Boster Catering has been in the Dallas Design District for 28 years. Doug started his business out of his own home and grew it to the multi-million dollar business that it is today. They cater grand openings, corporate events, weddings, and everything in between. Their client list includes presidents, politicians, and local celebrities, which I already asked. They have a DN, uh, non-disclosure agreement, so I'll, we won't be hearing those stories today. Before we begin, let's go ahead and make sure that everyone's view is on the right setting. We see our presenter, Brandy, and the work surface here she's presenting. That setting is in your view at the upper right hand corner of your screen. It gives everybody a second to find that and to adjust. And if you have any problems finding it, just chat in. We want to hear from you. This is going to be a, a casual forum this evening and uh, just chat in your questions, post your comments and at the end we'll, we'll address any questions that you have and, and share the good feedback with Brandy this evening. Okay, now that we're all set up, allow me to introduce you to our host, Brandy Price. A little bit about Brandy is um, she is, loves all forms of artistic expression from writing to poetry. She's even um, an actress. You may have seen her on some of her Amazon movies mm -hmm. and most recently, The Challenger Disaster. That's right. Yeah, it's I'm looking forward to seeing Challenger that. Challenger Disaster. <laughs> Should have it in awesome. 1986. <laughs> yes, I've heard of it. I'll yeah. have to check that out. Well, thank you, take it away. Oh. Hi guys, like she already said, my name is Brandy and I'm going to be teaching you lovelies how to make a charcuterie board. Are you excited? I know I can't hear you, but I know that you are. So we're gonna start out with a little history lesson. I don't know if anyone knows where the word charcuterie comes from, but it's actually 15th century France. They had these little shops and in those shops they sold pork and every byproduct and including the organs and everything. So char means flesh. Sorry. I'm sorry, we're gonna turn the volume up. Oh, so we're turning Someone's the volume up. Give me just one second. There we go. So you can hear me a little bit better? Yeah. Okay. Is that a little better? You guys hear me better? Yes? Okay, perfect. Awesome. So the 15th century French word uh, for flesh is char. And cute is uh, cooked. So cooked flesh. I know it's a little disgusting, but we're going to move past that and enjoy our fresh meats and cheeses that we're going to be presenting here today. Awesome. Okay, let's start with this one. So what you want to do when you're first doing your board, you want to pick the bigger cheeses first and the bigger portions of things. This particular cheese is incredible. It is a five-year aged Gouda cheese. And I can't describe how lovely this tastes. If you have a chance to taste it, it's incredible, like I said. So it has the texture of a Parmesan almost, but with the smokiness of that Gouda cheese. Um, so we're gonna keep that there, put it right in the middle, I say, because it's a lovely centerpiece, I think. And we can add, some of our bigger pieces with that too. Right now we have some table grapes, so some regular Concord grapes. Put those on the side. And then there's 
these grapes. If you have not tried these, they are also amazing. They're cotton candy flavored grapes. And you can find them at, these were actually found at Kroger and you can find them at Whole Foods. You can find them in various locations. They're awesome. I'm gonna put these right here. So there we have that. So that charcuterie is beginning to look amazing. Awesome. And then we have, this is a cheddar cheese. And this particular one is actually a vegetarian. You can't, vegetarian friendly. I know a lot of vegetarians do eat cheese anyway, but most cheeses are made with rennet. And this particular one is made with vegetable rennet. So it's safe for all those super veggies. And that is a cheddar Irish porter. It's infused with a port wine. So you can kind of arrange them however you like. I'd like to make a little thing a little slightly out of order, not necessarily, like a little off kilter, I guess would be a better way. This is another aged cheese. This is a Manchego, it's an Italian cheese. And this is aged three months. I'm um, sorry, this one was aged four months, but three to six months, you can actually call them Corrado. So this is a Corrado Manchego cheese, I would say. Just give it a little design, flair there. With this Manchego, I also cut up a lot of a little cubes for it. If you can see here, I cut them in little cubes. And I'm going to pair them with this lovely Membrio. So Membrio looks weird. It looks like a kind of like the cross between a tofu patty and a weird fruit snack. <laughs> but it's actually a quince paste. Quince are kind of like apples. And you can make your own, but this one we purchased at Whole Foods. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to slice off a little. So you have here. And you don't want it to be quite as big as these. So you want to make it like half the size of the, the cube that you have here. So if you have a cube of cheese here, you want about half that size in width because it is very sweet. You guys cut, cut, cut. And then you can put them on little skewers, toothpicks. And a, a great way to decorate your toothpicks is you can buy these little beads and just put them on there. And whatever color that you are celebrating, like if it's a baby shower, or if it's fall, like now we have the brown. And I also have some clear ones here too. So they add like a little punch of color. And I'm just gonna put those right there in the front. They pair nicely with this cheese because like I said, they're sweet and this manchego is a bit, um, it is a bit smoky and, and delicious. I don't know about you guys, but I'm one of those people that like to hum or um, sing while I'm cooking. It's, it's quite entertaining for me. I don't know about everyone else, but I do do it quite often. And you can, and you can load it up and then put these extra bits here or however you like. That's the cool thing about charcuterie is that you can kind of get expressive, like however you feel, like whatever you're in the mood for, you can just put it on there. Yeah. I think we'll leave it right about like that. And then they can take some without the membrio or they can take some with. And you can always keep this out to the side if you wanted to do some more. So we're gonna move on to our next cheese, 
which is this one. It smells delectable. No, that's not true. It actually does not smell really great, but it tastes very, very good. This is the Blue de Borne. Uh, if you're feeling super fancy, you can do the French pronunciation, but I don't speak French. I only speak Spanish, so sorry. Um, but this one is uh, the de Borne, and it is named for the, let's put it like this. I kind of like that. It is named for the central region in France, the central mountainous region in France where it is made. So it's just a blue cheese from that region. Like if I was doing like a Dallas cheddar, that's where it would be. Um, here, one of our other cheese, everyone loves goat cheese. Well, I feel like goat cheese is one of those things where they're either you love it or you hate it. And I happen to love it. This one is a smoky cheddar. So I'm gonna leave it in the package because it is a very soft cheese and it can get all over you. So a good trick is to peel off the top of it because it always comes in packages like these. And then as you're doing it, you can peel off the bottom like this and then set it on the board however you like here. So I'm gonna do it like that. Dun, dun, dun. And then um, also I have handy, which you may or may not have noticed already. This wet wash towel is my best friend. Okay. And then last but not least of our cheeses, we have a brie. I, I kind of hate ending it with this because, <laughs> although I do love brie, don't take that in the wrong way, brie, sorry, I love you. Um, it's just because it has just a very basic name. <laughs> But I'm going to put this up here too. So now we have kind of all of our cheeses spread out on here. We have some grapes. Then we get to do the fun stuff, <laughs> the decorating portion. I'm excited. Okay, so I don't know if you guys are cool like uh, us, but we have this amazing honey jar. Look, it's so cute. It just looks like a little honeybee just wants to live in here and they do. Okay, so as I said before, this uh, blue cheese is it can be a little bit uh, pungent. It's a strong cheese. Um, so if you add a little bit of honey to it, it really just kind of complements it so well. And you just dab a little there. You can make cute little designs with it if you like. Okay, so we have that one. And then we are going to, what do you say about some pistachios, guys? Pistachios are good because they add a little um, good crunch, obviously, but they also add color. And that is nice. When I'm doing charcuterie boards, I do like to group things together as opposed to spreading them out in various places. For example, like if I want to have a blackberry or a pistachio, I don't want to have to hunt them down around the board. So I'm just going to put them right down here between this Gouda here. Oh, look at those beautiful nuts. Oh, that sounded nasty. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> Um, we're going to go with some candied walnuts and it has cherries and some fun like dried apples and stuff in here as well, but you can just do candied walnuts or pecans and this is a good fall blend. Uh, let's go on the other side of this little guy. And you can just pick these places willy nilly don't be afraid. Like it's not, it's not like a rocket science here you're just gonna make a beautiful board. See, it, it's already like coming together so nicely. Okay, and next I am going to do another compliment. And this is an orange fig spread. You can get this, where, where do we get this? We got this one at Central Market. Um, and it's an orange fig spread, like I said, it's perfect for fall because it has, it encompasses all those fall flavors that you like. Like fig is a very, very fall flavor. And oranges too, like this picks it with that, that citrus flavor. So I am going to stir this up a little bit. 
so we can get a little a little glop is the, the professional term and i use this little glop right here and i go you have to make the sound effects or it doesn't work as well i'm telling you so we're doing this and putting it on this brie cheese because this soft brie is always good with with fruit and i don't know if you ever had baked brie if you haven't you're missing out so fruit is always a great compliment for brie just load it on there and then if you like you can even put you can leave it like this but i think putting it in a bowl um, with a little spoon is a good compliment for it. so you can leave that out on the side um, and i'm just going to put it right in front there cool we are getting on there so another good fall color and taste are pumpkins and we don't have any pumpkins but we do have the next best thing and that is pumpkin seeds delicious dun, dun, dun. just gonna do it just go for it don't be afraid see that guy that gouda guy just gouda grandpa there he just wants to be covered in these seeds and nuts Another good thing for for fall are dates. Um, yeah, you know, I, I know dating is a weird thing right now in the quarantine, mm -hmm. but <laughs> these dates never let you down. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to put them on here and I'm going to put them right here. Dun, dun, dun. Like I said, when you're placing these items, you really have to make those noises or it's not as fun. So this is where this is where you're gonna start like doing a little like drapery action. Oh look at that. Maybe that side is better. Oh, what do you think, guys? Oh, grandpa's getting frisky. Okay. I like it. There we go. Now some dates here in the back. Oh, sorry, I already did the dates. <laughs> These are figs. Okay. They're gonna go right here by this blue cheese. Oh, they look so cute. Yum, yum, yum. And then I'm gonna add some more crackers in the back. And we have a couple different crackers. These are some wafer crackers. And you can get these at like Central Market, Whole Foods any place like that, but these are cracked pepper and they're really, really good with any kind of cheese. Because always, you wanna have some bread of, of some sort. So I'm just gonna put the crackers on the back because not everyone wants their, their gluten fix. <laughs> like me, I love, I love bread. I love crackers. They're delicious. I also have some cheese crisps. Oh, these are to die for. They're like, have you had those parm uh, like the Parmesan whorls or the crisps? These are kind of like that, but denser and even more delicious. So these kind of have a tendency to break up a little bit. So like I said with the other ones, just kind of just don't be afraid. Just put them on there. You can always replenish as needed. So one thing I didn't mention about charcuterie, charcuterie is, um, was founded on the belief that no part of the animal should go to waste. And that's why they created these, these shops, like that shop in uh, 15, uh, 15th century France. They created them so that they wouldn't waste any part of the animal. I thought that was a pretty neat thing as I was learning about charcuterie boards. I don't know if you guys feel the same. Okay, we have extra crackers on the side. And fruit, they're always, they're always a good compliment as well. So we're gonna put that here. Dun, 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 dun. Put just a few of those by that cheese there. And last, 
but not less. We we're gonna add some of these, some of the meats. Okay, so this is a cool little pack that this particular one we got at Costco, but you can get them at Kroger or Central Market or Whole Foods, basically any grocery store. If they don't have this, it'd be a little bit weird. So let's do these. Okay, with this last, this first meat is a prosciutto. And I pre-rolled these because it's not super time consuming, but you know. And I actually like to leave them up like this because it adds a little depth to the, um, to the board. So I put them up in little, little guys like this, kind of, you can see them. And then I'm gonna put them right here by this cheese, right in the front. You're like, oh, look at that, mm, cheese. The perfect combination. And then this other one right here is called a dry copa. And then we have a dry salami, a, it's pepper salami. Um, normally you would, I would say, you would take each one and individually take it out. So it's a little bit easier to do, but I'm just going to kind of put it on here, just like that. We can have a little bit on that side. We're gonna have a little bit of this peppered salami as well. Yum, yum, yum. I'm gonna put that on this side. And then the last one we have some, this is a dry coated salami. So it's all kind of a variation of cured meats. You know, we've been doing cured meats and salted meats since for like 5,000 years. And it started in like ancient Rome. I thought that was an interesting fact too. Thanks. Thanks for enjoying that with me. Okay, perfect. Now we have our meat and we will put some dried and sweetened cranberries on the back because cranberries are kind of bitter without sugar. I don't know if you've had one by itself, but it's a, it's a crack to the back of the mouth. You know, like when you take that citrus stuff and you're like, huh, oh, yeah, that's a kick. That's what they do without that. So don't try them, I would say. Yeah, but that's just me, maybe you like that. Um, and last but not least, you put on those finishing touches and, oh, and olives. <laughs> we'll put those on there too because they're also delicious. Look at these. You know that you can eat these. They are edible. Do you dare me to eat one? I'll do it. I will, okay? At the end, I'm gonna do it. Let's just add some here. Oh, look. Dun, 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 dun. And that adds like a pop of color to them. Oh, that's so pretty, guys. What do you think? How, how are yours turning out? Look, there's some orange down there. And then for like the party trick, you're like, okay, I'm going to eat it. I said I was going to do it and I'm, I'm going to do it. Grassy, grassy ass. <laughs> Thanks guys for having me. <laughs> Tom's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Brandy, thanks so much. We had some okay. really good uh, feedback from oh, good. the attendees and some uh, excellent questions uh, that we we're hoping you could address. Yes, please. Uh, so first off, um, could you do a quick recap of the uh, names and the types of cheeses that we use? Yes. For um, okay, so we'll start from the front. This one is a manchego. It's a four-month aged manchego cheese, and that's an Italian cheese. This is the uh, uh, Blue Divorne or Divorne like if you want to do it in a um, American accent. 
This one is a Gouda cheese and it's aged five years. Um, this one is a goat cheese, just a typical goat cheese. And this is a brie. Oh, and don't forget this little guy because he's so cute. This one is a cheddar Irish porter, which is infused with port wine. Cool. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Rachel was asking, where did the honey jar come from? Oh, is it? <laughs> uh, well, it came from Crate and Barrel. I got that answer from my <laughs> Wikipedia on the side here. All right, I know uh, that's going to be a popular gift this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Linda is asking, what would be some ways um, that you could change up the board to make it more appropriate for the holidays that are coming up? Oh, okay, um, so one of the ways that you can do it, you see here we added the pops of color. Man, this this flower is very <laughs> strong. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like you're thinking about it the whole time. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the ways that you can change it up, you can really change up um, not only the ingredients um, based upon like seasonality of your vegetables and your fruits and stuff like that. You can do that and also by your accoutrement like this little guy could be changed for a holly leaf or like a pine needle or just anything that kind of goes with the seasons. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, typically how many cheeses uh, different types of cheese would you recommend for a board? Is there a, a right or wrong to that? There's no typical right or wrong. Aesthetically speaking like odd numbers are always better. So I say from three to five cheeses is perfect. Um, three for a smaller board, obviously, and then do a variety of cheeses between like a soft, a semi-soft, and then a hard cheese. Like you go with a goat cheese or a brie, and then you go for like a blue cheese and um, and the gouda, or even manchego. So, yeah. And lastly, uh, one more time, where did those Parmesan crackers come from? The Parmesan crackers. So the, the, these ones, like these particular ones, I think that's the these one. ones are from Central Market. Yeah, those are from Central Market, the ones that you can try like anywhere from restaurants, you can make them yourselves. Um, yeah. So, okay, so Central Market seems to be a, a, Central a, a good resource. It's <laughs> an excellent resource for anything right. like this. That All was, right. uh, yeah, that was it for questions. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Tom. And there was one more question about, oh. first of all, everyone is just commenting in on what a blast you are oh. how much fun <laughs> and how much charisma you have. Everyone's well, loving you. it. Um, but another question was whether or not you would want to bring ingredients for a board if you're visiting for the holidays or if this is something that you would want to make on property. So I feel like you can do either one, but I feel like it's better to do it there you can bring i think if you want to bring ingredients just make sure they're all still packaged and stuff because it does make it a little bit harder to travel with them mm -hmm. but you can certainly bring any ingredients yeah and one more question mm -hmm. is what kind of flowers oh <laughs> the lingering effect so <laughs> they are um they're just edible flowers you can get them at at central market <laughs> we love our central market <laughs> in, in Texas. Yeah, for sure. I think those are marigolds. Are they marigolds? I'm not a botanist, I so. so I I, I just I know that you know can that. eat them, and they're don't recommend it. You know, they're not <laughs> terrible. I think if they were with something else, it wouldn't be bad. But they're just like, hey, in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, like literal hey, in my mouth. <laughs> Well, this looks amazing. I hope this is this has certainly got me in the mood. So um, good. I'm starving now. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. and also ready for the holidays. Yay. But I definitely love like the levels that you put in mm -hmm. and mixing some of the stronger cheeses, uh -huh. sweeter things, and um, super. Another excited. like cool thing that you can do with, especially with a smaller board of that less less ingredients, because we have so many different things. To choose from you can kind of like um, break off little pieces of the fronts of these things of the like the gouda or the, mm -hmm. the harder cheeses like that and just break off and it looks pretty cool like it's, yeah. as it's coming down and you can peel like this gouda has a little um 
skin on the, the bottom. So you just like peel yeah. it back a little bit, like as you're doing that. So people aren't eating that. Don't eat that. That's, that's <laughs> not, that. that's not edible guys. <laughs> And yeah, it so. also encourages people not to be afraid to go ahead and dig it. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah. like, first of all, like, like people are like, oh, my God, I can't do it. But if they see this, mm -hmm. they're like, ah, someone already dug in. It's yeah, fine. Exactly. And so they'll, like, you'll see, like, when you first start, like, people will start with things like this because they're like, I don't want to touch it. It looks so pretty. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those um, cakes that you make or you have made. And people are like, it just is so cool. I don't, but, yeah, please dig in. Yeah. And also... Really try these grapes. They're so good. I cannot wait to try those. They're so good. And Cotton remind candy. me one more time what this guy is called. Okay. So this. This I cannot wait to try. This is a membrillo. And so what it is, it's quince. Um, it's a quince paste. Quince are kind of like apples a little bit. You, like I was telling you before, you can make your own and it's, you can make it with quince and then you like liquefy it and then you put it together with probably some guar, guar gum or something. And then um, some vanilla and lemon, but it's a, it's an interesting but delicious accompaniment, especially to like a, a stronger cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to try that. Okay. All right. Well, cool. thank you all. Thank you, Brandy. Yeah, no we'll definitely be having you back for the holidays for sure. Cool. Um, and if that's all of the questions. Um, We'll go ahead and move on to um, some last details, some final details. Um, you may have noticed on your invite that um, as a thank you for joining us, will be, um, we will have five lucky winners. So please follow us on social media and um, listen for that announcement for uh, your own um, charcuterie board for the holidays and um, join us next week for our next series all right stop planner time to learn from the experts on how to freshen up replace and take care for your your plants um, for the holidays we've recorded this evening's workshop so for any of you who want to review what any of the items are, create your own list. We'll be sending that out next week, along with a link to Doug Foster's site and their holiday menu. So that way you all can connect and get, get your board for the holidays, as well as home deliveries that y'all are doing for hot dinner. So stay tuned for that. Thank y'all very much. Have a good evening.